Hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Stephanie B. Barnes bringing you the word from SDB. It is my pleasure to bring you part three of the five part series, Mean Girls Grow Up to Be Mean Women and Mean CEOs. I am continuing my five part series on um, when bullies show up in the workplace and the marketplace. And on the first two nights, I talked about, uh, you know, what, how bullying shows up uh, in grown women in the workplace and in the marketplace. And on part two, I talked about, um, you know, how um, to deal with queen bee bullies, which is uh, the most vicious form of bullying in the workplace and in the marketplace. And tonight, I want to focus on bullies on the TV, video, and internet. Because, you know, one of the things that is um, particularly dangerous about bullies in the workplace, in the marketplace, is now they literally have a digital platform where they can um, spew all of their, um, their meanness. And, you know, not only do they have an audience literally of people uh, you know in the workplace but they can share their relational aggression their social aggression with the world uh, because now anyone who has a smartphone and a Facebook account can broadcast uh, t you know anything from anywhere and of course there are 50 million other social media platforms that allow these uh, bullies to have a voice and of course we are seeing a proliferation of cyber bullying because people uh, do have the ability to share with uh, many people uh, on on digital platforms and they use that instead of for good for oh wait okay let me figure out how to do this and they come back uh, <laughs> that's the thing about um, uh, Technology, you know, it's great, and then when you push the wrong button, then then that's not good. So anyway, I, I accidentally answered a call in the middle of my broadcast. So anyway, um, let me uh, get back on focus. I was trying to send it to voicemail and actually answer. So anyway, um, but uh, now we literally have a platform where uh, bullies can share their information with anyone, anywhere, and they use this uh, platform. Uh, freely because it gives them voice in a way that beforehand they didn't I mean, you know if you ever pay attention to uh, which I rarely do every once in a while I'll kind of it's really some crazy things you know and so we see that with bullying in the workplace and in the marketplace where uh, you know not only does it show up in person but it shows up on um, on the social media platforms as well and one of the things that I do want to focus on too is how reality te television has the um, effect of promoting the workplace bully promoting the queen bee and promoting relational aggression um, because you know I used to watch a lot of the reality shows um, and because I, I enjoy getting a glimpse into other people's lives, I love watching the fashion and the cars, the houses, and, and all the different things. And so it would be kind of cool to, to watch them, to get a glimpse of, uh, of, of, you know, how women were dressing and all these different things. But one of the, the things that I began to realize is that a lot of these shows were glorifying being bullies. And... And, it, and in fact, this is what I did. This is what I did my dissertation on is the influence of reality television on the development of leadership styles in women because I was very curious about how social, um, uh, well, how pop culture was influencing how we actually interact to, uh, in real life. And, you know, I began talking to a lot of my peers and the thing that I began to note was that you know, many of the um, antics of the reality star show, of the reality TV stars, rather, were popping up in everyday situations and, you know, in women's organizations, in the workplace. Um, you know, the, a lot of the ways that conflict 
resolution, if you want to call it resolution, was being handled on reality television was beginning to be emulated by real women. And, you know, and that's the thing about uh, pop culture is it influences real life because, you know, and, and particularly reality television has a greater influence uh, in the sense that it is supposed to be depicting real life situations. But the truth about it is that um, it is depicting uh, manipulated, if you will, uh, scenes from real life situations uh, because, of course, they edit it in a way that heightens the the entertainment value and then they kind of manipulate certain situations so that it will give rise to those uh, settings uh, or to those situations that are going to be um, um, entertaining, you know, and we watch it. And so, you know, I, uh, you know, looked at a, a lot of different studies and here's some things that I don't know that, you know, if you are a fan of reality television, one of the things that you may not recognize or may not really be conscious of, or you may be conscious of, but don't really want to, uh, to pay attention to it because you enjoy the entertainment value of it. But, you know, many times these, um, um, reality television shows promote conflict as a major element. And, um, many times it escalates to verbal and physical aggression. And even though in many instances, you know, the Real Housewives series, for example, many of those women are held out to be businesswomen. And there are a lot of reality television shows that focus on businesswomen, i.e. women who own businesses, women who are business leaders, community leaders. And the, the very dangerous side effect of that is, you know, these are supposedly influential women and how are they showing up? How are they dealing with conflict? You know, what does that say about uh, how women really deal with each other in, in real life business settings? So, you know, a lot of the ways that the reality television shows depict these women, uh, it does not promote positive interpersonal connections between women. And so, you know, when women leaders are portrayed negative, whether it's in scripted television or in reality television, you know, these, it does have an influence on how we emulate and not just how grown women emulate what they see, but how young women emulate what they see. And, you know, I, I get very concerned because the reason that I, uh, you know, did my dissertation on this is because, you know, I began to think about, you know, when I was little, when I was young, when I was a teenager, you know, my, my television role models were Claire Huxtable and Murphy Brown, okay? Uh, Claire Huxtable, of course, was a, a very polished, poised attorney, mother, and was a great role model, if you will, role model. And I put that in, in quotes because obviously she wasn't a real character. And then I liked Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown was a television executive. And, um, you know, she otherwise promoted, you know, strong um, a strong business leader. And so I thought about, you know, when I was 14 years old, 10, uh, 12, 14, I think that's probably when those shows were on, you know, those were the people that I saw on television. And now young girls see the reality television shows. And these women are held out to be business women and they're held out to be conducting business. But many times the way that they actually deal with conflict is resorting to being bullies, if you will, because typically there's one ringleader who runs, you know, there's a queen bee on the show, and she kind of manipulates everything else, and, and, and there's all, I mean, there is a, a proliferation of relational aggression going on on the shows. So, you know, it's very dangerous, I believe, in that it really glorifies the queen bee, and it glorifies this behavior. And I, I thought about, you know, how difficult it is to be a Michelle Obama in a Cardi B world, okay? And, you know, I don't have anything against Cardi B. You know, she has, uh, she's a great businesswoman. She has figured out how to, to maneuver in the hip-hop world, and she's making a business and a, a career for herself, and she's making money. She's marketing. She is using the 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 um, the influence that she has to make money. So I I don't knock her for that. However, you know I do take issue sometimes with with the way in which she markets herself. That's not the way you know that 
I would want to do business in, in my industry. Now, it works well for her in her industry. But it is hard many times when you're trying to raise a young woman to be a Michelle Obama in a Cardi B world. So how do you distinguish between what's appropriate for this businesswoman, how it's appropriate for her to handle her business as opposed to other businesswomen or other business leaders or community leaders or, or women leaders uh, all together. So the, these are very important issues that we need to be aware of and, and be um, conscious about how we build dialogue around these issues in real life. Because one of the things is, as grown women, we have to be very careful that we are not, in fact, emulating these behaviors in our business interactions, in our social interactions. And then we need to be um, conscious of being positive role models for young girls who do watch this, to help them to understand that, first of all, that's not real, and that, secondly, that those types of behaviors, relational aggression, which is the gossiping, the manipulation of relationships, the resorting to aggression, sometimes verbal, sometimes physical, to handle conflict, is not going to be tolerated in the business world. Because whether you are in corporate America or you have your own business, you cannot deal with conflict like they do on the reality television shows. And you know, and again, those things are entertaining. And I don't knock the women who are on the re reality television shows. I do wish they would make better choices about how they deal with it. But I understand it's a business. It's entertainment. You know, they make their choices. That's fine. But, you know, we have to, to recognize that the impact that that has on um, um, the young girls that we're trying to influence and what we're trying to do um, with our business relationship. So I just wanted to, uh, to talk about that. And, um, and the last thing I'll say is this, uh, because uh, I do need to get on off of here. It's late. I, I, my flight, I have a 8.45 flight in the morning. Guess how, guess how much I pack? Nothing. So I need to go pack and get ready for that so I can actually make my flight. But I did want to make sure that I continued the series um, and, and the last thing that I'll just say before talking about how bullying shows up on the internet, on the videos, on reality television, is that we need to be very careful of the social media imprint that we leave. Because, you know, there are so many times on my feed where I am observing um, bullying going on between businesswomen. These are women who... I would otherwise hold in high respect because they are great business women, but the way they're conducting conflict is reflecting negatively on their business. And there have been a, a, a lot of people that I have said, well, you know what, I, I'm not going to do business with them anymore because if this is how they're showing up, if this is who their true character is, I don't think it's something that I want my brand associated with. So we do have to be very mindful about one what we comment on, and two, how we use, what, what kind of social media imprint footprints we use. Because um, as an organization, you know, because this, this influences women's organizations, it influences nonprofit organizations, it influences business organizations, whether it's a company or a, a, a small business. We have to be very mindful of what we share about the conflicts that we're having either with our our colleagues, our employees, or customers and clients, you know, because, you know, you may do something, say something in the heat of the moment to address an issue, or it may be something that you legitimately need to address, but it may not need to be aired out on social media because those things are out there. Because even though you may go back and delete a comment, Somebody can screenshot it, and then it shows up and it's out there forever because we do know the power of the screenshot. So, you know, for this is especially important for our youth to understand how important it is to not use social media as a bullying platform. Yeah, you can get away with saying a lot of things, but really you don't get away with it. You can get away with it in the sense that you have the platform to say it, but there are real consequences and implications 
of putting things out there for the world to see. So, um, you know, there are continue to be more and more laws that are promulgated that will that regulate the things that are said in, in holding people accountable for the words that they put out there because there is not there's no such communication that is without consequence and so you know it is important to be very mindful of you know what you say to and about people on social media platforms because it may they may need to hear it and they may need to be said in the way exactly the way you say it however it does not necessarily need to be put there for the world to see because the next day when tempers have calmed down when the issue has been resolved the image continues and um, the um, and the brand is diminished and that's the really important thing that uh, I want to close out in talking about the the influence of your brand because bullying has a, it, 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 it creates an image of you. And, and tomorrow night, actually, I'm going to talk, or not tomorrow night, but the next session or the next um, segment of this five-part series, I'm going to talk about some person, personal experiences I've had with bullying, both being bullied and showing up in as a bully in the workplace, kind of how I um, projected some issues I was dealing with in the workplace and how it, it, it showed up. But I want to talk about how, just leave you today with understanding how important your brand is. And particularly in a world where things take on a digital life of their own. I mean, there are things that are going to be out there forever. And... You may respond to someone or something in the heat of the moment, but it, it, it ruins your brand forever. And as women business leaders, we really need to be aware of the power of our brand. And not only the power of our brand, but the power of destruction that bullying brings to our brand. Because it can burn and crash us immediately. And it takes years to uh, build back up our reputations. So the important thing to remember is that the social media platform is not, is not the place to air dirty laundry about your organization, to air dirty laundry about the woman you like, you don't like, whether it is of a social or of a personal nature. It's just not the place for it. Why? Because it's going to eventually impair your brand. And your personal brand is an extension of your business brand, of your organization's brand, of your company's brand. And if people are able to see you behaving in a way that negatively influences your brand, ultimately that negatively influences your money. So if you won't think twice about bullying behavior in the marketplace and workplace, particularly on social media platforms because of your brand, think about your money. Because ultimately it does have an economic impact. In that in some instances, if you are working for an organization, you can lose your job. If you are the owner or the face of an organization, you can lose business. So this is a very real issue that is not just about women's interactions with each other, but the real financial impacts of bullying in the workplace and in the marketplace, particularly when it is amplified in social media platforms. So I just uh, share that uh, to, to really continue the dialogue around how we interact with each other in the workplace and in the marketplace. Because we live in an era, in, an, in a time, when relational aggression and social aggression are glorified that on television, on YouTube, on social media, and it's part of our pop culture, but it doesn't have to be. And it definitely doesn't have to be a part of our business culture. Because ultimately, whether you are a bully or not is a personal choice. 
And as business leaders, particularly as women business leaders, we need to make the choice of taking the higher road. Yeah, there are some things that need that it's the right thing to say, but it ain't the right thing to say, if you, if you know what I mean. Some people deserve it, <laughs> okay? And some, some comments just need to be as raw as, as they come to your mind. And they're truthful when they come to your mind that way. However, there, um, there, is, a, there is an art to being able to tell somebody to go to hell and they enjoy the trip there. And that is something that, as business leaders, we need to embrace um, really um, taking on that art of being able to say exactly what needs to be said in a way that's so elegant that people are like, hmm, she just told me to kiss her behind and it just sounded so good I can't even be mad, okay? <laughs> you know, and I say that somewhat facetiously, but what I mean is it takes a lot more intelligence to tell to to get someone to recognize their asinine behavior than to just tell them you're acting like an ass okay i just said the same thing you wow you are exhibiting asinine behavior today okay rather than cussing them out you know now because you know i love my expletives love them to death and, and love to use them profusely however there is a time for my expletives, and there's a time for my artful expressions. And that's something as business women, as business leaders, as queens, that we need to fully embrace and really uh, focus on that rather than resorting to the baseness of bullying. Okay? So... Again, I don't say that in any judgmental way. I have said some things I shouldn't say and, and will probably do so at some point again in the future because I'm human. However, what I'm saying is, is that when we recognize that we are behaving in a way that is impairing our brand, we need to take immediate action to, to repair it and, and, to, and to address it. And so that's what I'm going to talk about in part four of the five-part series, Mean Girls Grow Up to Be Mean Women and Mean CEOs. And in part four, we will be exploring bully reformation, okay? Because not all bullies remain bullies, and it is something that if you are exhibiting those behaviors or you know someone who is, there is um, a, there's a way to overcome it, you know? And, there, and it all begins with self-awareness and a commitment to making choices where you lead in the way that best represents you rather than leading in a way that's going to impair your brand because bullying impairs your brand, all right? So thank you so much for joining me on part three of the five-part series, Mean Girls Grow Up to Be Mean Women and Mean CEOs. I hope that you join me next time on part four where, we'll be, where we will be exploring Bully Reformation. So I am Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, and it has been my pleasure to bring you the word from SDB. And the thing I always like to say, you know, as a leadership coach and a business coach, these are things that I often help clients with. It's something that I've experienced myself. So if this is something where you need, uh, you have some opportunities for improvement, I do welcome you to give me a call and uh, let me know that you need some help, and I will certainly work with you because our personal brands are an extensions of our business brands and we need to always make sure that we are handling conflict in the best way possible and that we're handling relationships in a way that builds up our businesses rather than destroys them so thank you so much i appreciate it thank you for joining me and lakeisha you didn't try to get on tonight i'm, I'm never gonna let you live that down that was just so cool but anyway thank y'all so much and i do look forward to engaging with you and i appreciate your comments and look forward to joining you or you joining me rather uh, in part four where we will discuss bully reformation. So, again, if you have any questions or something that you want me to address as I continue the last two parts of this series, please text me at 
228-238-7997. Again, that is 228-238-7997. Let me know something you want me to address specifically that you might not have wanted to put in the comments or if you need some coaching around this uh, because it is an area where I do and can help business leaders to become better at dealing with their relationships so that it doesn't impair their brand nor impair their business. So thank you all so much for joining me. I look forward to connecting with you in part four of the five-part series, Mean Girls Grow Up to Be Mean Women and Mean CEOs, where in part four we will be We'll be um, discussing bully reformation. So thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.